Welcome back. Mato Tackle Talk. It's my favorite YouTube channel because I know nobody's watching it. <laughs> Last uh, insert installment, we did this trace over here, this, uh, this telescopic. It's a magic thing. It really makes life much easier on the boats. You can just have one or two traces, a couple of backups. Instead of trying to have one for a shad and one for a mackerel and one for a bonito and one for... Even, you can even make these things for Walla Walla, but they can still be used for live bait as well. So the more of those hook droppers that are on there, the more the longer the bait can be. So in this guise, this is called a number two because it's two ounces. And um, this thing extends quite like from a sardine up to a shad quite easily and then maybe even a, a bonito. But I think this number two would be like a bigger trace that you'd carry it. It'll can handle like about a two kilo money or maybe a bit more. And then the other one is number one will handle um, the smaller baits so they can start at a red eye size and extend out a bit. Okay, but now we're tying a strip bait swimmer. Yeah, let's gonna just show you the whole process quickly so that we don't have to, to understand what's coming. We're going to tie quite a few knots. We're going to not luckily have any blood. I didn't hurt myself once on this trace. And it went very smoothly. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the, the beginnings of the trace. Then there's the, the Mado head going in. A couple more knots. And uh, shortly the duster part will go on. Because this is a strip bait swimmer. And it's ready to go near the surface. There's only a, a half ounce or a one ounce. Um, you can choose. It's half ounce or one ounce. But it's not really a deep diving bait. This goes on the top. That's why you don't have to worry about using wire. Because... There won't be any sound or resonance because it's right in the top in the bubbles or or in the surface and there's no real pressure either this is not really a deep diving lure although you can change the angle of attack which i've told you about in other videos you can make it go deeper but this has also got a duster on so basically it's a surface lure it's a strip bait swimmer surface lure all right now we've got to take a few precautions here in case a stupid bullfish comes along or a big wahoo or something with a powerful jaw so because it's a strip bait and we're going to hide the dropper in the bait, once again, we go double, double number six in this case, because if the trace is going to break, it's going to break in that dropper somewhere. So the don't take chances. You know, you might get a crock. Lots of big pizza take fillet baits. Let me tell you, the 30s and plus, they char fillet bait. But okay, in the meantime, um, that's the first knot. I don't even know what to call it. It's a rigid knot. And it's not that difficult. It looks difficult, but it's not that difficult after you've tied a few. And um, now we're going to close it off with a couple of uh, hay wires. Luckily, it's double, so it's extra strong. You don't have to put too many hay wires or too many barrels in at all. Once you've got the first kinks going, it becomes quite easy. And like I said, only a couple of barrels. You'll never, ever unwind this knot under, under any pressure. <laughs> we'll just double like there's no chance. All right, now we've got to get rid of those stupid tag ends. And I have been saying you can't use pliers, but it's true, you mustn't use pliers. But I found another way. If you just slightly kink the wire and then with the pliers and then start moving it around, you can get a, a break very nice and close to the edge because you don't want these little things to hurt your fingers. Okay, I think we got that right. Yeah, easy. Okay, that's one method. Okay, that's the cool thing about making these traces together so you guys can check out how not to hurt yourself. Yeah, I at least bleed once every trace uh, making session. Okay, so there's the length of the fillet. You've got to choose um, if you're going to use a, well, I, you know, it's like a, a sardine fillet. Or the best is obviously um, Benito Shine, the cut of a, a bunny belly. That's just like unbelievable. So strong as well. Once you hook it on that front hook, you don't have to use anything to tie it on with. Um, but with uh, a sardine fillet, you, you'd best tie it on with something. I don't really like using cotton, but I'd rather prefer to use a really shiny, strong bait from a bonito or a shad belly. That's a nice idea for shad fillet too. They'll, oh, shad fillet on this will be just so so delicious looking. But okay, there's a simple knot, a wire twist, and now this method of taking the tag end off is how you're meant to do it. Once again, be careful of your fingers. But you make a right angle bend in it, and then you just crank it. Yeah, it takes a while still, but it comes off very cleanly, and quite quickly, in fact. So that's method number two, but that's, you, you need a quite a long tag end um, to get that right. Okay, there's it. There's the basis of the trace, the front part. Well, 
on in this case we're not putting any more extensions on it's just that nice and strong that's a kendall round up front there okay now although i do chop and change the front hooks doesn't really matter okay now we've got a beautiful one ounce that's a one ounce um mito silver bullet face from very easy to rig there's uh, choices of holes in the front there um i can't I, sound like I put them in the front hole if i'm gonna go really fast you know but in my in most of the time i go like between two or very slow or two four maybe six knots and that's this is fine even up to eight knots the front hole is great um and it'll go a little bit deeper although this one's getting a duster so the the hydrodynamics of the mitre are affected by the fact that there's a huge big duster hanging over the nose but once again like i said this is a surface bait it's going to move like a bait swimmer moves um but it's going to be right near the top and in the top turbulence here you know where all the white water is coming out from the prop wash that also gives any lure right close to a natural action in the water and that's where you want to be just just at the back of all the bubbles where the fish can not really discern that it's an artificial lure and, and not, or in this case, it's actually going to be a fillet bait with that juicy stuff hanging, sm coming smelling off it, which is uh, important. That's why, and a fillet bait looks so natural and it's got that natural shine. Ow, oh, the power just came back on, but I just love it. We are on solo here now. Eskim sip, yeah. Okay, um, I'm so stoked with the concave. Uh, Porsche GT3 RS spoiler effect we got going here for more downforce. So stoked about it. It's a pity this one's getting covered up by a silly duster, but the dusters are great. They just really are great. In fact, you don't even have to put bait on these things. You can just chuck them out and you get strikes. But if you put a beautiful bait on there, you end with a chance at a proper fish, like a big pitter or even and a selfish. Selfish love what this rig that I'm showing you now with a beautiful as we've discussed, shared or barely shine from a bonita. Okay, there's the swivel going on. And this is the final knot. We use number six wire here because we do hook big fish. And it's better to have a little bit of extra strength of that number six gives you. And like I said once before, we are fishing in on the surface. So we don't have to worry about making a noise or being too stealthy. A lot of it's getting all disguised in the bubbles and prop wash. That's where we're fishing these things, by the way. In the cuter spread that I, that I sell here also, this is a part of the cuter spread, and it shows you quite clearly where to put these baits. They actually are surface baits until you get a strike, and when you get a strike, you can leave them, especially if they're on the inside rigger clip. Then um, they kind of sink down, and they become swim baits. Okay, they, that's how you do it. Then you put a fillet bait or a tiny little... A red eye sardine or something like that so now this cuter spread that is your main bait obviously so you'd probably have two of these you know you might have three but that's taking a chance two is enough to handle and you put one quite far back at the back of the spread and the other one really close and then most likely the one that's really close is going to go first so and then in between those two you put your other things like these two strip bait swimmers that's another one that i made up yesterday I just variate the colors a little bit. There's Dorado season coming up, so I made that one on the right for Dorado, but the other one on the left is more for pizza and stuff. Although, you know, colors are really hard to to try and tell you which color to use when. Yeah, I don't really believe in colors too much, but there we go. Okay, these are the droppers that I just sit here and I make and I make. When the power goes off, I just make these things. Um, I can still look when the power goes off, but I have to take a break. So I make these things, and you guys could also do that. Then you only have to have these things on the boat, plus your heads, and then you can choose your leader as and when it happens. Because, like I said before, 300-pound nylon leader gets a hell of a lot more strikes than number set eight Y. Or when you start fishing for big cooter, and and then also bullfish, and then you have to up the wire. Check the con the concave in that thing. Hey, yeah, I really enjoy making these things. By the way. Thank you for all of you actually by them. Thank you, thank you. But okay, so that would be the way I kind of would fish is, ah, check these things out. These are the new flashes. You know that you've got these on quite a few boats. So as you're going along, the sun hits that super foil and reflects down, straight down there to where the big fish swim. And this is a really good plan for uh, raising bullfish. This really works for raising bullfish. So as you're going along, you look like a shoal of fish. Um, especially as the angle changes and you bob and weave through the to the swells 
So you got these are available as well now. So just check them on the website if you are uh, interested in getting more, catching more fish. There's a bit of packaging, our latest packaging. We send all our stuff out in these little tubs. That's the Ports and John's uh, kit on the, in, the, in the front there. That one there. That's actually going to Ports and John's pretty soon. It's another one on its way. And um, there's a shad. There's two shad traces together. Those are also strip bait swimmers, but without the duster, and they're very lightly rigged. Those are number five leader and those tiny little front hook. Can't identify that one. Ah, that's a good plan, eh? That's a new. Take a lefty's deceiver or something like, or a big fly, and then put it on the tiny little bait swimmer here, and you've made yourself a fantastic lure. So you can put a heavier bait swimmer, you can cast out to beyond the bat line if you put a one ounce, but that's the tiniest one, and then you're in the game, you're like this, eh? This is like a bucktail, but not a bucktail. But okay, thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.